Hello, welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much for dropping by. Now, one question I keep getting quite often, nearly once a week actually, um, is all you folks who can't seem to see anything through your telescope. Now, in the daytime, no problem at all. But as soon as you start pointing it towards the night sky, all you're seeing is black night sky. Now, don't worry. This is quite a common issue or a problem, if you want to call it a problem. Even I've been guilty of it in the past. Um, now, I'm going to assume that you can see something through your telescope in the daytime. If you can't, we've got to state the obvious. Make sure that uh, you've removed the dust covers of your telescope. Now, you may be thinking I'm insulting your intelligence here, but you'd be surprised how many people don't actually do this. <laughs> it does crop up from time to time. Now, this includes all the dust covers, including if you've got a small re removable ones like this, you take the whole lot off. Okay, so I'm assuming you've, 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 you've passed that te first test anyway. Um, so if you can take your telescope out and you are seeing things in the daytime, then you know at least your telescope's not broken. Now, usually where the problem lies here is, it may sound obvious, but you're in broad daylight when using your telescope in the daytime. So you have reference. So say for instance, you're looking at a light, lighthouse or something like that, you wanna look at a lighthouse, you look through your telescope and say, oh, I'm just off a little bit. And then you can move your telescope and uh, you know get, get the uh, said target in the center of the field of view. And that's because you've got ground reference and you can actually see something straight away when you're looking through the eyepiece. Now, because of how telescopes work, um, whether it's through lenses or mirrors, you may have noticed that everything's kind of topsy-turvy and back to front. Like when you want to move up, you, you think you've got to move up, but in actual fact, you're moving down. Left is now right and right is now left. Everything's really uncoordinated. And it does take a bit of getting used to that. And if you then take all your references away, such as, you know, your daytime, your trees and, or whatever, and you're just looking at black, combined with this uncoordination of how the uh, optics are set up in telescopes, it can be quite a bit of a challenge. This is where your finder scope is priceless. It's, <laughs> it really is. Uh, if there's one, um, one thing that's the most useful thing you can ever attach to with any telescope is a finder scope. Now, finder scopes come in two, more commonly in two uh, types, a red dot finder like this one here and an optical finder like this one here. Now, I'm assuming that your telescope has got a finder scope on it. Uh, if it hasn't, I strongly recommend that you go out and purchase one immediately because uh, just finding something as bright as the moon without a fi finder scope can be quite a challenge. So you're gonna have no chance with things like, you know, planets and, and even fainter objects like deep sky targets. Now, if your telescope has got a finder scope on it, it's vitally important that you set it up correctly. Now, please don't skip this step. Uh, because like I say, the finder scope is so useful. I wouldn't know what to do without a finder scope. You know, I mean, it's almost impossible to do any kind of observation without one of these things. So now I'm not going to go too much into how to set one of these up. I have done many videos, well, not so many videos, but I have done videos on uh, setting your finder scope up and you'll definitely be able to find, uh, there's a plethora of videos on how to do this on, on here on YouTube. Uh, but just as a, as a quick guide, as a quick start guide, what you need to do is to take your telescope out in the daytime and find a distant target at least 300 yards away, okay? And then you want to center that, find it in your find scope, whether it's a red dot like this or an optical like this, and get it spot on in the center. Um, it's always good to use a static uh, target, obviously, not something that's going to be moving about. So, so a treetop, a chimney top, something like that, something that you're not going to mistake. And get that set uh, bang in the center of the crosshairs or the red dot to be spot on where you want it to be. Then what you want to do is get a, a low powered eyepiece. Now this will be an eyepiece with a high number on it, something like a 20, 25 and above. Put one of those in and have a look then through your telescope and see if the target is in the center of the field of view. 
Usually it won't be. So this means you're going to have to spend some time uh, on these optical finders. You have to just move uh, by tightening and loosening these three little screws here. Uh, it's slightly different on a red dot finder. Uh, there's two adjustment screws on either side, which uh, have got your left, right and your up and down. Now, take your time with this uh, this part of the setup because like I say it's so important um, just don't say oh that'll do you know that's something like uh, because when you're actually using it at the night sky you want it to be absolutely spot on you don't want to be doing no fishing about for things so once you've um, once you've got that crosshair in the uh, your target crosshair check if it's in the eyepiece like I say if it's in the field if it isn't then what you want to do then is, is adjust it, uh, move your telescope now, the main telescope, and get that object that you wanted your finder scope to be seeing in your eyepiece. And then recheck your finder scope again, and that's where you need to adjust it. Now, when you're adjusting your finder scope, you want to lock anything off, okay? So any kind of locking me mechanism that you may have on your tripod, make sure you clamp all them down. Uh, because you don't want to be adjusting these and the telescope's moving all over the place. That's not going to give you accuracy at all. Uh, that's just going to uh, work against you. So make sure you clamp it down. Like I say, don't skip this stage. Don't like just say, oh, that'll do. Get it spot on and always use a low powered eyepiece at first and then you can then recheck it with a higher uh, eyepiece something like a 10 millimeter and make sure that that through the when you look through the finder scope and you look through the eyepiece that it's both spot on in the center of the field of view i can't tell you how much this is going to help you when it comes to nighttime observation now, another very common mistake that a lot of beginners make is using too much magnification. Now, I've uh, covered this many times in videos and warned you against it. Now, what I mean by this is, is like putting something like a four millimeter or even a 10 millimeter eyepiece and then trying to find something straight away through the telescope. This is not going to work, folks. OK, you need something low power always always whenever you start whether it's the moon the planets deep sky it doesn't matter you want to be using your lowest powered eyepiece and then gradually increase the magnification now one eyepiece i would recommend in, in purchasing is something like a 30 millimeter eyepiece now you can get these, you can get uh, in a Plossel design. Uh, Plossel's just uh, a, a name for the arrangement of the lenses inside the eyepiece, and they tend to be a, of better quality. But you can pick something like a 30 millimeter Plossel up for around, well, easy or under 50 pounds. Uh, that's going to do your uh, uh, just fine in, and that'll work with most telescopes. Now a 30 millimeter is not going to give you hardly any magnification it will magnify a little bit but what it is going to do is give you a wide field of view and a nice bright image and I can guarantee you if your finder scope is pretty much spot on when you've with a 30 millimeter eyepiece in there you're going to see it you're going to see your target straight away as soon as you place that eyepiece in there um, and then what you want to do is once you've got it in the sense of the, uh, or in the field of view is to again lock everything off make sure that your telescope's not moving about too much uh, because you don't want to be doing too much fishing because like we've said it can be disorientating uh, especially at night with this uh, with everything being back to front you know up down left right is all opposite so then gradually increase the magnification so from a 13 maybe put a 15 in uh, if that's not giving you what you want then maybe put a 10 millimeter in or something like that and keep that target in the center of field of view um, because like I say if you just go out with high powered magnification like a like a 10 millimeter eyepiece tell, <laughs> sorry 10 millimeter eyepiece and an uncalibrated finder scope and try to find something you're not going to stand a chance so these are your first two checks. Make sure that your finder scope is well aligned with your, the tube of your telescope and also use your lowest powered eyepiece. And like I say, get yourself a 30 mil. They're not expensive and it's gonna be a really good investment that you'll use constantly as your finder. You, you can class that as your finding eyepiece. Another big problem on entry-level telescopes is the mount. 
Now, it doesn't matter how good your telescope is or the optics on your telescope are and or how well your uh, finder scope is calibrated with your telescope. If you're on a dodgy, weak, wobbly, sticky, cheap tripod, you're not going to stand a chance. Now, these are the sort of tripods I'm talking about. They, they, they come with a lot of entry level telescopes, including this one. This one came on um, one of the, those type of telescopes. Um, as soon as you can, upgrade. Now, I'm not saying that, you, you know, your telescope might have only cost you £100, say, um, and a good quality tripod is going to at least set you back £100 plus okay, and above. Now, you don't have to go for expensive astronomical tripods or mounts. Uh, just a good quality camera tripod will do it, as long as it's good quality. Um, there is a lot of um, Altaz mounts, just, you know, the, 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 the same, that are specifically designed for telescopes. And I think you can pick them up, roughly, I think, starting prices around about 125, 130 pounds. But shop around, because, you know, it does fluctuate massively uh, depending on which uh, site you go on or shop or whatever. Um, but these cheap, sticky, wobbly mounts are the bane of our hobby. Um, I will go as far as saying that these type of mounts are hobby killers. Um, they, they really can uh, put people off the, the, the hobby um, because you know what it's like. You, you, you just get the thing in the center of the field of view and you let go of it and it's moved because the, either the, the tripods move or it's sticky and jerky. They're just no good for astronomy, folks. Now, I've done a video on how to actually improve um, these type of mounts. I'll leave a link to that in the description. You can have a look at that. But I would strongly recommend, and like I say, even if it costs more than you've paid for the telescope, it will be like having a new telescope on a mount. The mount is so important in astronomy. I mean, it has to be, as the, the, the sturdier and some more solid it is, the better. I mean, go for overkill. I mean, it really doesn't matter. The more overkill amount is, the better it's going to be. So what about if you really are on a tight budget and you can't really afford an upgraded mount at the minute? Well, if you're good at DIY skills, there's no reason why you can't build yourself one of these type of mounts. Now, these are tabletop Dobsonian mounts, and, and I honestly don't understand why telescope manufacturers don't put all types of small telescopes on one of these type of Dobsonian tabletop mounts. Then You don't just have to have reflector type telescopes. I for years used a small refractor on one of these Dob mounts. The reason why I say good at DIY, because they're really easy to cobble. You can soon, if you, if you know, if, you, if you're a bit handy with woodwork or you know somebody, show them a few pictures, tell them how it works, you know, and I bet you could, they could make you up for, make you one up for as less, you know, 20 quid or something like that. And again, this is gonna dramatically improve your overall views of the night sky. They're smooth, they're solid, they're really nice to use on small refractors. And like I say, why, why manufacturers don't provide this? I think it's for aesthetics in it and the way it looks. Uh, you know, a, 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 um, it's traditional to have a, a telescope on a tripod. You know, it just looks better, but it doesn't make the overall views better. It makes them worse. And like I say, turns it into a hobby killer. And that is a crying shame. So if you can, um, knock yourself one of these little tabletop mounts up. 100% better than the provided cheap, flimsy, uh, wobbly, sticky tripods that they sometimes do provide. So these are the more common reasons why uh, news or uh, beginners can't actually use the telescope in the night time. It's not that there's anything wrong with the telescope. It's, like I say, it's usually either the finder scope, the mount, or too much power. It's as simple as that. The key thing with astronomy is patience and take your time. Remember, astronomy is a hobby. It's a hobby. You're supposed to relax and enjoy the night sky, not get frustrated. These cheap, sticky mounts, they're gonna get you frustrated. You're gonna have a, a terrible time you know, under the stars with those things. So that's th these are the three key um, points that 
or going to stop you from seeing the beauty of the night sky, basically. Well, I really do hope this has helped some of you out. Um, it's also, before I wrap this up, it's also a good idea to take your telescope out in the daytime and practice with it. A telescope has a little bit of a learning curve. It's not as easy as just holding a tube up and seeing what you want. You know, get used to how the telescope moves through the optics with this uh, coordination thing where everything's back to front. Don't... Um, uh, one thing I will say, though, is you can sometimes get these things, um, which are correctional prisms. They can, they do sometimes come in uh, eyepiece form as well. Now, these prisms that make everything the right way up are not good for astronomy. Um, they're great for daytime use, by all means use them for daytime use, but for astronomy, um, you could... Uh, Without going into it too much, you just get a lot of false colour, um, a lot of um, a light loss. Um, it's going to actually going to hinder you more than help you. So get used to just straight through, you know, an IP straight into your telescope, whether it's a reflector or a refractor, and just practice with it in the daytime, moving from target to target, and get that drilled into your into your brain, so you know when you get under the stars which way to move your telescope. But hopefully, if you've set your finder scope up correctly, you've put the right eyepiece in, you're not going to need to do much fishing. Well, there you go, folks. That's another video wrapped up. Uh, but as promised on the last video, I just want to do a special shout out to all these legends here. Uh, these are all the people that sent were generous enough and sent me super thanks in the chat and i can't tell you how much i appreciate that especially the way the things are today um, and this is what i'm going to do um every time now every time i get a super chat i think you deserve a shout out and uh, like i say from the bottom of my heart thank you so much for your kind donation it really does help me out a lot well, that's it for another video, folks. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget, like, share, subscribe, all the rest of it. And I will see you on the next one. Bye for now.